Hello, hello everybody, and of course, welcome to the third game of the second semi-finals of the ESPL Weekly Series number six. I, of course, am Briefcase, your caster. Along with me is Mito, and we should be seeing, I hope at least, quite a lot more very, very good Dota. For anybody who doesn't quite know what ESPL is, maybe you're just tuning in from Dota Lounge to see your rares either gain or slip away. Weekly tournament, every single week there's $100 in the prize pool at the end of three months, which is actually only coming up at the end of March, so very, very shortly right now, we'll be having a main event with, a, what was it, I think 50% of all ticket sales go right to that prize pool, we're going to have Cloud9 show up there, as well as Sigma Gaming, and it should be a big hoot, and right now I think the prize pool is around $8,000, and it should only get bigger by the time that happens, so... That's what it is, everybody, and uh, let's get into some Dota, shall we, my friend? Yeah, absolutely. So last game we saw the Mongols flexing the muscles and took a very convincing game. And now we've gone into game three, and once again, Ancient Apparition. Nobody seems to want to ban that hero. He's gone through the draft every single time. But so far, the team with the Ancient Apparition just ends up losing. So it'd be interesting to see. I feel like... Both teams haven't quite figured out how to place this hero in their draft and how to use it to its maximum potentials. Um, that is a very early pickup from the um, Mongols though, like the Doxia. It's it's not a hero that gets first picked anymore like he used to. Um, it's place that's definitely fallen off in comparison to heroes like Timbersaw Clockwork, etc. And at the same time, we haven't seen anyone ban or pick the Ember Spirit today. I'm actually genuinely surprised. I'm a little bit disappointed, I have to say. They did actually, I believe they banned out the Ember Spirit <coughs> in the very, very first game, the one you weren't here for. So there was that one, but beyond that, not too much at the moment. And it looks like <coughs> Druckwell, once again, picking up this Luna. They just seem to be very comfortable with this Luna carry, very happy to get her. Uh, and right at the moment, I don't... Honestly, no why you'd pick up a Darkseer as second pick right away, but I mean if you just look at Ancient Apparition and Darkseer alone, it screams big AoE combos and I hope to see some ridiculous team fight potential coming out of the Mongols just cuz. Just cuz I'm hoping. Well, traditionally like Darkseer, it, it's just a hero that fits into any lineup and it, it's it's the kind of hero that just fits into any lineup and can do pretty much so much. He can jungle, he can take mid, he can take offlane, safe lane solo. Even like if you really want to, you can run Doxia as a support, even though it's not the best. But yeah, I mean they they definitely have thought out what they wanted, which is going to be the vacuum into the ice blast. Um, just just got to be on the lookout to see what kind of what other three heroes they want in conjunction with what they already have. Storm Spirit, Storm Spirit would be a great pickup as well. Oh yeah, and I, as we've seen in the past, Luna's small little Lucent Beam, just not quite enough to deal with the Storm Spirit, at least in, in my experience. Team Druckwell though senses something is up, maybe as far as AoE is concerned, and uh, takes out the Naga Siren, which of course is the perfect setup for a Dark Seer Bomb. But now the Mongols pick up the Earthshaker, and I don't want to say I was right, but I think it might it might pan out very nicely. We I think it, was it was it the Mongols who picked up that Earthshaker before, and he has just the most money of blocks. Oh yeah, it was amazing what he did with the Earthshaker. Um, well, I would love to see the Mongols pick up Faces Void. Um, all three heroes they could use a little Void love. That's another great hero to set up everything they want. Oh yeah, and I mean, really, the one problem with Faceless Void that that falls uh, or that kind of falls prey to him, or, or really does make him fall prey to it, is it is a uh, kind of long range stuns or ensnares or or stuff that really does screw with when he does Chrono. If he can't get the most out of it, it really does impact how useful he is. And at the moment, Druckwell doesn't really have something like that. Uh, Bane is still available, however, and he's a, a good way to deal with Void, but Batriders, his, uh, <clears throat> Batriders 
excuse me, disable, not so good at getting a void in a Chrono Luna. If he does pop Eclipse, it can be a little bit of a problem, but not too bad. And then Venomancer obviously has no disables whatsoever, really, so... I think Void, maybe not this pickup, but a fifth turn pickup if he's not banned out, which, I mean, why would he be? Not a bad option by any means. Our, never mind, oh, there he is! Boom! Oh, we're calling buddy. it, buddy. Yep. Wow, should have made a bet with you. No, I can actually can't. I can't in. trade with people. I reset my Steam password because I forgot what it was. Oh, and, liar! And, no, I bet you got caught for scamming. No, they don't let you trade after that. They don't let you trade for five <laughs> days after you reset your Steam password. I didn't know that. It also doesn't uh, help. I have that no I've, idea. I've had like these these weird requests for my uh, whale hook for Pudge of just random people, and I'm not I'm not digging it. <laughs> oh man, dude. When the website was, when the ESP.GG was up, I was uh, testing out some bugs, and then I was asked to turn off my Steam Guard, and then after that I couldn't trade for three weeks. I was so depressed. Oh! Oh! Yes! <laughs> and I mean, there, there's a hero right there, Tinker, obviously, who, he actually has quite a few ways to deal with Faceless Void in Chrono, and just outside of it. If you start kind of going onto a Tinker and he's happened to get a March of Machines out, until later in the game, about the mid-game, you know, 20 minute mark, Faceless Void is going to be taking such a beating from those machines, he won't want to actually stay in his Chrono and do whatever he can. And not only that, if you don't catch Tinker, and especially if he gets Ags with the recent buff to his Ags and the fact that Laser's got, what, like, 1300 range or something, Mito? You know the range, right? I think it's 1100. 1100 range. If you don't get Tinker in your Chrono, you're just going to be blind the entire time. And that, and then you might have to pop your BKB just to hit people in your Chrono. It's just not worth it, really. So I think this Tinker pickup could be brilliant depending on how it's played. But not only that, Team Dracula always absolutely loving their very mobile heroes, ones that are very strong at pushing and split pushing. And the look at the Mongols right now, they don't have... Two mobile of heroes, Faceless Void can be fairly all right with that recent buff to Time Walk, but and Darkseer's got Surge, but they have nothing that really counters Tinker in the in the same way that you would counter or that they dealt with Nature's Prophet last game. That uh, Faceless Void can always grab an Aghanim Scepter, 60 second cooldown, and then you know, um, do you know the Puppy Ward? That uh, really, really heavily counters Tinker, and part of the reason why I don't play the hero anymore. What's that? Um. I'll, I'll ping it out later right. once we get into the game. Um, oh, it's basically you just put the ward outside the map. Gives vision because it's it's actually considered a high ground. When you put the wards in the in those trees, it gives you all the vision over the entire terrain of that general vicinity. Hmm. Huh. Well, we'll see. It looks like the Mongols waiting and thinking long and hard about exactly who they want, and with that Tinker pickup. They really maybe do want to pick something up that has that has a little bit more mobility that can might be able to actually deal with the Tinker because right now, yeah, they have a good way to deal with a lot of high ground. They have amazing team fight potential. Uh, I don't know if Pugna is really it, but maybe trying to take the hurt to Team Druckwell a little bit earlier on and trying to take as many towers and maybe control the map that way with a roaming Earthshaker, Pugna in the mid, taking some early towers, something like that. But I'm still a little fearful for Tinker, honestly. If Team Druckwell can drag this late, it seems to be pretty scary for the Mongols. Oh, no, no, no. Pugna destroys Tinker. Like, whenever you rearm, like, all of Tinker's spells already cost a lot of mana. And then, like, just even rearming, it, it's it, it destroys Tinker. Um, but then again, no matter how good the Mongols can push, it's always going to be so difficult up against the kind of heroes Druckwell ha already have. Uh, the, my only concern for Druckwell is right now, they, they always have somewhat of a paper-thin lineup, and the positioning is going to be the key to their survival. But, I mean, th there has to be someone to eat those spells, right? You can't really miss a Fissure that easily. Um, so with that being said, they need to look for a tank that can kind of soak up the damage they need to take. And I would say a Beastmaster is not bad. Alright, Frank. Yeah, Beastmaster is not bad at all. And of course, when you do have that Hawk, that's a really nice way for Tinker to just get around wherever you would want him to. So, 
I mean, always a possibility, I suppose. I, I like the Beastmaster pickup myself. Will obviously help Luna into that late game as well, and is a good way, another quite long-range way, uh, especially if you have Ags, of dealing with Faceless Void if he does Corona and you don't get the Beastmaster. One big roar, and that's just an ult for an ult. Actually, but you're coming out way ahead, I think. As a matter of fact, if they really want to, they can also go for one of the great junglers. Chen would be nice, and actually any of the junglers would be nice. Chen, Enigma, Enchantress, along those lines. Um, if you're not gonna get a tanky lineup, you get something that can heal you up. Um, well, they go for the Wind Ranger. Not quite what I expected, but not so much. <laughs> it's very interesting. I just don't know how Drakwell are gonna. Be able to deal with the Mongols lineup into the late game, um, unless Tinker gets a very fast hex. But then again, Tinker is gonna be like who you aim to shut down, trying to catch in that Chronosphere every single time. Oh yeah, so it, for me, like... I think it's just gonna come down to how do the Mongols deal with Tinker, and if they deal with them well enough, I think that they have this. Yeah, both sides have great pushing powers, um, but I think. Mongols, their lineup is just much easier to execute, whereas Drakwell, they rely so much on getting those pickoffs. Because in an all-out team fight in the early game phase, before a lot of items, um, it's just so difficult. Wow, this is a nice ball from Dr uh, from Wind Ranger. <laughs> Bloodwood Arc. Haven't yes. seen that before. Yes, indeed, it's looking none too bad. Let's get to who's actually playing who, because obviously the folks at home. They can look at their eyes, but we gotta let them know with their ears. A Kimbro gonna be this Tinker. Looks like Cube as the Wind Ranger. Gonna be going mid, actually, of all things. Corn always on the Luna. Maybe he only knows how to play Luna. Not too sure, but there he is once again. James Joyce on this Venomancer. Looks like we're gonna have an off lane second in Setsu Bat. Always in the off lane, and this time around, just burning all these trees, trying to make sure that no funny business goes on right there. Over here on the Mongols, we're going to have Sanke going in the mid once again, as this Pugna has quite a lot of uh, last hitting potential in just his damage right there. Storm, as this roaming Earthshaker, as we saw before, not quite as many clarities this time around. Instead, going for those smokes of Deceit. Actually knows, I think, James Joyce to be there. Does indeed. Looks like we're going to have Huntsman MGL as the Ancient Apparition. I should get a little bit faster in this Masquerade as the Darkseer. Going to be jungling, it would appear. And then Paxa. Going to be this top carry, Faceless Void with the Quelling and Stout. A little bit greedy, but none too bad by any means. I'm just wondering what kind of format is uh, Tinker going to be playing. Um, whether he just outright farms the Ancient, or he's going to take the medium camp and large camp, run much of the machines here, and then walk over the stack. That'd be interesting to watch. And Pagna really wants to get that Observer Ward. Block the camps. But... Oh yeah, so, oh yeah, oh, so, uh, Puppy Ward, as you said. What, 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 what? Alright, so just anywhere in, like, on the edge of the map. For example, if you're Dire Team, you're pushing Tier 2, right? Then you can place a ward somewhere here. Do you see one pinging on the map? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it'll give you the vision over entire all of these trees, like the entire area. Mm, so that I way see. you can always catch a tinker, even he's even if he's blinking around the trees, because you can just see him. That's what you're I afraid see. of. I see. Looks like we might about to have a little bit of a D ward war, but Storm, of course, does not have a single thing there. Instead, just going in to block this ancient camp and be a little bit annoying. And it does look like a Kimbro. They're going for this very incredibly greedy ancient stacking tinker who's just cutting down trees and trying to use March on the Machines only. And if, I mean, if, if, uh, basically. <laughs> Little roaming Earthshaker, and he's gonna do it again. If roaming Earthshaker can be j this annoying all the time, it's just gonna be completely screw up a Kimbro. And who goes, who wins in a man fight? Each eating a tango, who's gonna go for it? You do have the possibility of Wind Runner or Wind Ranger, I guess, gonna, uh, who can throw down a power shot and, and force him out. But when it comes right down to it, Storm gonna eat quite a few more hits uh, than Tinker simply because he is a melee hero. So. A little bit rougher for him, but he is completely screwing over this Tinker right now, and that, at the very least, is uh, Tinker having a very slow boots of travel comparatively what you would normally have. He's still only level one. He's gotten no extra gold from creeps at all. So I don't know. Pretty, I think. I think worth it for this Earthshaker. He doesn't really care about it, honestly. I don't like the way they're doing this. Um, oh wow, Earthshaker. He continues doing this, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. 
Um, so this time, I don't know. I just feel like a Kimbro, he can just go and take the medium and large cam and stack those instead. It doesn't really matter. Like, Tinker, there's so many ways to get the farm. It doesn't have to be the Ancients. And if they want to do this, right, they should just let the Tinker solo the mid lane and have the Wind Ranger do the Ancient stacking. Um, it might be a little less obvious, but... Ooh, Storm, he's got double damage. It looks like they're trying to set something up with the Wind Ranger now with the Might... March of the Machines down as well. Needs one. Doesn't quite have the mana for a Fissure. And that March of the Machines actually doing quite a bit of damage. But the Dragons are able to actually pot shot a Kimbro a little bit. No stack going down. So, I mean, if you're really, really just, you're just trading an Earthshaker's farm and levels for, for a Tinker's, that is a much better trade for the Earthshaker. Now he's got a smoke. He's going to go up here, try to make something happen on second Densetsu. But with Firefly, can't really do too much. And Pax obviously can't follow it up. And now second Densetsu on top of Storm. Not too sure what he can do now. Masquerade is there to surge him to make sure. But uh, still, Akimbro pretty drastically hindered and hamstringed by the constant pressure coming out of Storm there. Yeah, this is... Going to be some really, 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 really slow levels for Tinker. Um, I don't, I don't think going for the Ancients is the right choice. Um, if you're behind, taking the medium camp and taking the large camp will, will get you the levels you need. So once you hit to level three, and then you can start. Cons I mean, you will have to stack, anyways, because you're taking the medium and large camp, and then just walking over to stack the Ancients. And either way, you're going to benefit from the farm. Um, that's why, right from the beginning, I was like. I'm very interested in which way he's going to do the Ancients. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now it looks like we have a TP coming out on... Oh, I thought it was going to be Darks here, but instead it looks like he's just mucked that up a little bit or feeling a little bit uncomfortable with how close James Joyce and Corrin were, and I think rightly so, really. Now trying to make sure that this tower doesn't take too much damage, but always a little bit difficult. Akimbro finally is... Uh, actually, is it, he still hasn't killed a single creep, and... I mean, if uh, eventually Storm shows up once again, or even if Sanke just sticks to this wall right now, he's going to be getting a lot of experience just from getting that alone. Yeah, one thing that the Earthshaker can do is just sit around here, right on this spot, because you're going to soak up all the XP anyways. And because the Ancients are here, you're not going to take as much damage. Oh yeah, so I just I just don't Ooh. really know who's coming out on top as far as this uh, as far as this map is concerned and who's getting more out of it, really. Like Mongols. you have, you think the Mongols entirely? Uh, you do have. Well, now now I suppose that Darkseer has indeed gone bot. That he's got level three Ion Shell. It's making life a little bit harder for Korra and actually quite a bit harder. But before that, she had free farm. But I mean, I guess Pax are right, going tit for tat with her. Pretty much all day, and now we actually have the supports of Mongols coming in, trying to make sure Cube doesn't get out of here. And there's one stun. Is there another? And the drain, just to finish it off. First blood going the way of Ancient Apparition. He's got to be enjoying that. Whenever you are guaranteed to be the poorest support, you can't help but love getting that first blood. And Tinker still only level one. This March on the Machines has just been so, so slow. He's finally gotten one hit. Looks like he's trying to finally get a second and right in time for Storm to show up and be a huge annoyance. What can he really do now as well? Storm, he's level three. He's got Fissure. Can't quite use it just yet, but Akimbro needs to be careful. Cube never really wanted to go up there and help him because obviously you have to deal with Sanke and it just feels like you can't really kill Sanke because all he needs to do is drain whenever he wants to. And now it just looks like the Mongols, they've given up on top because they know Paxa can handle himself. Nothing that uh, second Densetsu can really do, and you're just completely hamstringing a Tinker with your supports, and sure, they're not getting much themselves. It's completely worth it. Oh, and, this is so bad for the Tinker. And Storm, just sitting there soaking up the experience. Wasn't able to deny the stack or anything like that, but he doesn't seem to really care, and Tinker, six minutes in, this is what you would scream at if you had him in your pub. Let's be honest. This would be so rough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he should he had alternatives, um, but he just wanted to really force the issue with the Ancients, which I think is not worth it at all. He went for the medium and large camp, right? It, oh, much, Huntsman much harder, now in sure. a heap of trouble. He's got Gale. He's got to throw down whatever he can. Throws down. Ooh, throws down a nice Ice Vortex and a Fissure to block James Joyce. And look, some nice body blocks coming out from his buddies. But uh, Cube trying his very hardest to actually get a kill. Couldn't quite find it. And while this is all happening, obviously, Akimbro, he is able to still throw down a couple marches of the machines. But 
the longer and longer he stays at level two, and the longer and longer Martian Machines is only level one. Just it's just gonna take him forever to get anything done. Like, uh, so I love what the Venom Master is doing. He's helping the Tinkerer so much by putting up a um, wall of wards. These like Plague Ward armies. But at the same time, like Faces Void, he is getting pretty good farm. Oh yeah, he's getting yeah. just as much farm as the Luna, and Luna's going almost completely uncontested and unmolested. You do have Masquerade, who's always annoying, but I mean, Darkseer's getting a lot of farm himself. You have you have Paxa getting a lot of farm as well, and for for how little you're really losing by annoying a Kimbro like this, you're gaining a lot out of it. And now it looks like there it is, Second Densetsu, completely doomed, chilling, or I should say, cold feet along with uh, Chronosphere. That and Fissure. That's a guaranteed kill, pretty much no matter what, and once again going the way of AA, he's gotta love that. Yeah, being rich is the support. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we put in so much emphasis on the Tinker that I haven't really been looking around. Yeah, I, I just haven't been paying attention to anybody at all, really. As far as the mid is concerned, Sanke winning that handedly with uh, Nether Blast constantly, getting a lot of damage oh. onto Cube. Oh, that's what you want to do, folks. You don't want to get a lot of points into Crepify. You want to use Nether Blast, and in that small delay, you want to decrep whoever you're going to be blasting. Looks like Masquerade trying to go really far deep onto Corrin. Doesn't know that second Densetsu is here, and that's probably going to be his death. One Lucent Beam to follow up, and yes, indeed it will be, but you do have Sanke here as well. Looks like... Uh, Corrin gonna need to be able to try and get out of here. Doesn't have the mana for it though. It looks like Sanke not quite aware of that. Now he's gonna send in an illusion just to scout out, see if he can't find somebody, and does indeed. And now with that, he's gotta realize this has gotta be going well. All he needs to do is suck, really. Uh, not too sure why he hasn't yet. And trap him in with the illusion. Still not too sure why he hasn't. And with that, that actually looks like... I mean, that was a guaranteed kill on the Luna there. Yeah, pretty much. He could've blocked him in. Um, oh, the dodges. So, end of the day, everyone survives, and finally, some of the problems was Akimbro, he, he wasn't running the Machu Machine in the correct direction earlier. Um, he wasn't fully utilizing the amount of damage he can do. And just now as well, um, what you should do is attack the Ancients for them to come out a little bit, and then run the Machu Machine so that all of your, like, little... So they run down here, and, and army. the March of the Machines is going like that, yeah? Like, top left to bottom right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh no, you can use, I prefer like this way. Bottom right to top left. Fair enough, fair enough. But either way, yeah, Mongols definitely seeming to get more out of this, uh, out of this map at the moment. Not too drastically, however, and gold difference is not too noticeable by any means. Experience the same. But I guess when it comes down to it, it's who is actually getting the experience and who is actually getting the gold rather than the difference in it. Because you have Sanke who's doing quite nicely in the mid, and that's a hero you want to get it. You have Akimbro who you really do want to get quite a lot of gold and experience, and he has just not been having a good time by any means. So I guess when it comes down to it, the Mongols, it's fairly equal in who's getting the gold and experience between the teams, but of which heroes and their importance, it's differing pretty greatly. Bat does pick up a blink though, so a 10 minute blink, not too bad. And it just, they really need to make some stuff happen with that Team Druckwell does, yeah. Oh yeah, but it's actually not not, not too bad for Druckwell at all. Uh, Luna went for a greedy build and isn't getting punished. In fact, Luna has a kill with the Batrider early on. So, they don't have too much to worry about until that Faces Void gets really fat. Well, I mean, he has opted to get uh, four points in the time lock early. He's already got a Mask of Madness. It Pretty much every single time he has a Chrono available, that should be a kill. And now it looks like we have probably the makings of an engagement on bot, a Smoke Gank at the very least, Masquerade, pretty much doomed to die here with Eclipse as well. Couldn't quite get both of them, however, Storm with a little too much roundabouting in these trees and running away, but still, a nice pickoff going the way of Team Druckwell. Gonna solidify the evenness, I should say, or basically where each of these uh, teams is as far as farm and experience is concerned, but still, Corrin has going very greedy, hasn't been punished, and that's really gonna start ramping up for them as well. I mean, you do have Pax, a Vaseless Void, a very strong carry in his own, but they have ways to deal with him for sure. Yep, and right now, oh, that A ultimate. Oh! Lands, and this should be a dead Luna.
Oh, beautiful! Oh, no! Well, I think another mistake that Luna did was she picked up the Ogre Club. There's that Chrono by Paxa! Doesn't quite... Oh, there he is. Does indeed have it. And Cold Feet as well. And looking very nice for him. Ancient Apparition. Oh, baby! How many kills is he at? Four? Yes, indeedy. This Richard... We could be seeing an Ags right now coming out of this guy. Cool. Sitting at 2,000 gold, man. 12 minutes in as an AA. That's terrific. <laughs> I would love to see Aghanim rush. And that that that's also something they desperately need. Um... Be able to combo with the faces void every time, um, but back to what I was saying about AE ultimate, right? Um, when you get hit, and it, you should never switch your treads to strength, or pick up any strength gaining kind of items, because it changes um, the percentage of the, your HP. But at the same time, you don't gain any any HP from picking up those items. Oh, it's like masquerade. Masquerade and Storm overstaying their welcome just a little bit. Sanke is here as well. Echo Slam on two, not quite enough to polish him off. And Korn now cleaning up. Masquerade gonna melt when everything is said and done, however. So a three for one, not the best of trades. Paxa really does want to get in there, see if he can't help out. Doesn't have a Chrono available, but does have obviously Time Walk, does have Mask of Madness. I think he can be a little bit more ballsy than this right now. I love this build, but I, I felt he could have gone for a Midas to start the game off with. Um, he, he got a great start, wasn't really contested that much by the bat rider. Um, and he didn't join the fights that early on. Like sure, he's been he has two assists, but for the majority of the time he's been farming. And if you're gonna spend so much time farming, he should have gone for Midas. Midas right now pays for self in around eighteen minutes plus. Um, so by around twenty minutes into the game, his items would end up pretty much the same. Oh yeah, but I mean, a little bit unfortunate I suppose, but he's got Chrono now, he can basically be as ballsy as he could ever want now. And Akimbro, he's finally picked up those Boots of Travel, so he might be able to start coming online a little bit, but with such a bad start, it, it looks like he's happy to just stay at the Ancients, probably farm up a Blink Dagger at the very least, and then with that, will feel quite a bit more comfortable going to those lanes and pushing them out, because he's still having a bit of a hard time dealing with these uh, Ancients, even right now. So now there's a haste room for Storm, saving it for the docks here. Well, that that's Masquerade ain't far from his mech as well. Um, so let's see, do we have any answers from Drakul? All right, so Tinker has his boost of travel, Saurian bottle, and there's no one making the mech for Drakul. So on that note, it means that Mongols can start to take team fights. Oh yeah, guaranteed. Ancient Apparition, no Ags rush on him, unfortunately. And actually, there's a stack in the jungle that uh, is probably just waiting for Luna, but instead going the way of Paxa, and that's going to be helping out him quite, quite well. He gets a Maelstrom as well, and just making his farm going to be start ramping up quite significantly from it all. Luna is getting closer and closer to that BKB, but it really doesn't matter against Faceless Void at all. So, I mean, as, as far as he's concerned, he just doesn't really care what Luna has right now. It looks like they're trying to set something up on the bot lane. They do have, obviously, Ice Blast available. They know something is up, however. You have Pugna now streaming down as well, trying to basically reverse this gank. It's four on three at the moment. If Pugna gets caught out, they're going to be in a heap of trouble, and it looks like now Mongols opting to retreat instead. Looks like Second Densetsu, all he needs to do is bust out that Firefly, see if they can't find something happen. They're going to find Sanke, it looks like, and he is going to be in so much trouble. Pax is right here, however. Does indeed get lassoed, but a nice fissure just to stop it right away. Try and make sure that nothing else happens. Beautiful little Nether Ward doing its work. Looks like now Paxa... Oh! Can't quite evade that long shot coming out of Cube. And you so far, the Mongols absolutely getting destroyed in this engagement. Cube can't quite find Masquerade fast enough. Can Sanke clean up right now? That uh, that power shot, not able to find him as well. Looks like Sanke trying his very darndest. Ooh, ooh, can't quite suck long enough, though. That was dirty. Oh, uh, that fight, it, w it went so well for Drakwell. That battle was initiation, and then they cleaned up. And that, that preemptive march of machines was so great. The moment, like, first Faces Void and Earthshaker walked in, that easy power shot just destroyed them. Whew. So, 
Couldn't backtrack that one. If he had, though, might have gone, I think probably would have gone completely differently. Would have had Chronosphere to fracture Druckwell's line and basically make sure that at least one of them gets taken down with him. And But uh, just didn't pan out that way. And, of course, when you have Mask of Madness on and you don't have Chronosphere available, or you just don't, you're not in it, you are so frail. No matter how many points of backtrack you have, it can always fail you. And, of course, that's just the RNG gods at play there, making sure that Paxa... Doesn't feel invincible pretty much this whole game. I want to just briefly look at the difference in gold as well. Mongols, that lead starting to dwindle pretty heavily now. Only about a thousand advantage. Experience-wise, Team Druckwall actually starting to get that lead. And I think that just comes down to Akimbro not being contested at the Ancients anymore. He's been able to basically farm them up all day long. And he's basically ramped up so much. He's now level 8. He's actually not missing out on too much. Paxa now gets a nice chrono on 3 in the middle of a fire path, however. And now finally pops that Mask of Madness. Not too sure why he didn't before. Can't quite get up here. Would have still died anyways. And it just looks like maybe if he had popped that Mask of Madness a little bit sooner, gotten out of there, killed a little bit faster as well. Wouldn't have been too bad. But uh, I suppose with this ward, one of those rockets always going to be able to hit him anyways. Um, the Drakwell, they're starting to pull, like, pull back from their early game loss. Um, like Mongols, this is the time where they have to apply the pressure. Otherwise, in another 10 minutes or so, they're, they're gonna start, they're gonna realize they're, they're actually gonna be very far behind. In terms of, like, your farming, Dyer's just having this farm war. Is under attack. It's not gonna be in their favor. Yeah, not at all. I don't think so. And I mean, we were just saying... Kimbro, he took so long to me, get going. Me, me, this might be a solo kill. Oh, I don't know about that. Looks like Sanke now in a heap of trouble himself. Obviously that Nether War doing a lot of work, but not quite enough there. <laughs> uh, and just getting caught out by three, it looks like. Trying to really, trying very, very hard to get a solo kill and couldn't quite find it there at all. Now TP coming in onto Storm. It looks like, no, not quite, not quite. Decides against it, but... Akimbro, who used to be so far behind, now level 10. He's actually caught up and surpassed Earthshaker, so things starting to look a little bit better. And this is when, yeah, they dealt with Tinker fairly well in the beginning, and it's just starting to not last. And he's starting to come online, starting to make things a little bit more difficult for them. Engagement into the mid. Chrono oh. on three. Absolutely beautiful. Why? There it is. Finally does. Doesn't quite have Mask of Madness available, and doesn't even matter. It looks like... Three dead for absolutely no gain coming out of Druckwell. Ooh, Masquerade running for his life, is able to get out of there, however. And so, you talking about the Mongols need to start applying the pressure. Team Druckwell, as we can see, can't really do it themselves. You do not want to push into a Faceless Void who has Chrono. You don't want to push into an Echo Slam, and especially not a Nether Ward and Ice Blast. Ugh, oh, that is just scary. Oh yeah, now... Mongols. Ah, uh, no, well, that was some brilliant, brilliant uh, execution right there. Having everything just land the way they wanted to. That was big. Um, yeah. Now, Luna still quite far ahead with already BKB on board. Um, oh man, I would, I would love to see the faces void after the BKB. Go for some like huge deeps, huge kills. Um, I don't know. Like I've always feel like the new faces void. Aghanim Scepter is not really required anymore because I mean level 3 Ultima is only 80 second cooldown. It's only it's only 20 second extra compared to the 1 minute they can get. And Faces Void is a hero in the late game that runs off item slots. It, 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 devast, it devastates me every time the, go, the game goes past where I can go for more than 6 items. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, it's quite sad. Oh yeah, for sure. But I mean... They got this Aegis now, they can kind of go in and push, and I think they really kind of need to start doing that. Obviously, they don't have a pipe up on Masquerade quite yet, but to wait that long, I think, is a mistake. And they have Mechanism, they have Chronosphere, obviously, if you see anybody around. They've also got level 4 Vacuum, that is a huge AoE. I think they really do need to start making use of this, just because Tinker, he has started to come online, oh, no. but not as drastically as you... Uh, as you would normally want him to. He isn't basically pushing out everything a million times over. And now it looks like nice little blinking from Storm, but the weirdest follow-up. Vacuum being used on nobody. It looks like instead didn't want to use a Fissure and target that uh, that Ghost, or uh, not Ghost, or Wind Ranger. So it's just 
Odd. All, all the place over. Now Paxa trying to find a second Densetsu. Will be able to find him, but uh, of course a Blink and four Staff and TP out of there. Going to be able to guarantee out of there. And just looks like a lot of wasted time kind of coming out of the Mongols there. And a wasted smoke as well. Knowing that when they smoked, yeah, it was directly underneath this Observer Ward. That was that that gank would have never worked to begin with. It looks oh, like down the bottom, Sankey is in so solo much trouble. killed by Corin. Oh no, Eclipse just going right his way, and of course, not too much that Pugna can really do there besides maybe try and drain life through it, but it's just not going to pan out. And now looks like Mongols having a pretty good time here as well. Storm gets a fissure down. Looks like we have an ice blast going. Actually, vacuums Corin outside of the ice blast. Does not latch, however. It looks like we do have Pax of Chrono onto the Corin. He's not going to be getting out of this one alive, especially with that wall down there. And at the very least, they get the Luna eventually. So not too terrible. Q picks up a uh, double damage rune. Not bad at all. And while that's happening, they actually are pushing into the mid. Looks like Storm. Not too sure what he's doing right now. A little bit too deep, it feels like, at the moment. But uh, nonetheless, looks like he's going to be safe. Oh yeah, and now Void, he just got his money for the BKB, so in terms of net worth, he's, he's still hanging there, like he's along the same lines as the Luna. Um, yeah, so he, he's doing none too bad. The, the later this the game goes, the scarier this face is Void is going to become. Oof. Yeah, he's There's got a his... lot of burdens on the Batrider to, to mm -hmm. grab him before he turns on Bonosphere. Yeah, true, and obviously that BKB, not going to be doing too much against Bat, everybody else though, just going to fall prey to that, and they really just need to start making it, <clears throat> it feels like right now, Mongols, they're really running on their cooldowns at the moment, they're waiting for Chrono to be up, obviously Ice Blast is usually up, but they're waiting for Chrono, they want Vacuum and Wall available, Echo Slam to a lesser extent as well, but... Uh, they just really need to start gearing Faceless Void, and, and they've started to do this, obviously, with the uh, BKB, into being able to get kills and find people and get pickoffs without having Chrono and having to rely on it, too. And it seems like we have a dig on Tinker. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to see. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I just don't feel that this game, they need. The Dagon. They already have enough bursts as it is. They need disables, something to lock down the faceless void after the flaming lasso. And I would say the cheap stick would, would be a lot more useful in this scenario. Plus, I mean, th there's always backtrack, right? So there's always a chance of you using Dagon 5 and nothing happens. Kimbro really far forward. What's he doing here? Fissure immediately and just absolutely melts. Not too sure what he was thinking there. Obviously, I mean, yeah, you could probably get away from Paxa, but he actually just time walked on it. He wasn't even stunned by the time he did, and he was in the middle of rearming with. I guess he could have blunk out of it, but still, looks like an unnecessary death. And with that, this tier two gonna drop very quickly. I feel with these constant nether blasts, Paxa always available. Man, that power shot always, always deterring him just enough. He can never seem to evade that one. He's got ages. Shouldn't be too worried. And he's going to TP mid, and if he can find a Luna, I think he has enough to take down the Luna one on one. Oh yeah, and I mean, you might as well Manus. pop yeah. the Aegis just on the Luna. See if you can't chase her down with Time Walk when everything's said and done as well. Still though, I feel like that top tier two that probably could have fallen. All they really had was Wind Ranger, and yeah, the power shots are annoying, but I feel like they could have just forced the issue and, and really gone in there. I'm wondering if we're going to see any puppy wards from the Mongols later on when Tinker becomes a really potent, a force to be reckoned with. I don't know, I guess we'll just have to see. Well, Rin Ranger actually, well on her way to getting her own sheep stick, so getting a little bit of extra disable is not too far off for them. She's got that Mystic Staff, obviously, already, and really she just needs, what, that Void Stone? Another 2,000, 2,200 gold or so until she, uh, really has it up and running so I guess it's it's well on its way to getting done but it's still you know four or five minutes but that's gonna open things up at least a little bit they won't have to be too scared of Paxa all the time 
uh, in pretty much every team fight, as long as Cube kind of plays that uh, back and forth game, cat and mouse, where with four staff and win run and constantly trying to make sure she's not in range, they really, really are going to be able to stop Paxa dead in his tracks, unless, of course, he does pop that BKB as soon as he gets in Chrono. Oh, yeah, and now there's a gem on the Venomancer as well, so. Fight. Ooh. Second would be, Densetsu. Would be quite hard for Mongols. Thought he's gonna get be a little bit too ballsy there, and no, not at all. Paxa just continuing to farm up, doing whatever he wants. So who did, who has gem? You just said it. I was couldn't hear you. Venomancer, James Joyce. Boom. Oh, that Sentry Ward. Oh, just barely out of range. Look at look at it. It's ridiculous. That Observer Ward versus the Sentry Ward. <laughs> Right here. Oh my god. And for, yeah, from a different, like, if you actually look at the sentry ward, it looks like that observer is actually right dead center in it, but uh, not not quite. Roche is actually going to be possibly up fairly shortly from now, so something to look out for, obviously, as well. Masquerade might be falling into a heap of trouble now. Cube still invisible because of that rune, and Masquerade needs to be quite careful. You need to know or feel at least something is up, but... I just don't know if this Tinker is being used to its full effectiveness. I mean, obviously he had a very rough start, but still, if you look at these lanes, they're not all pushed in tremendously. You have up top, Pax is still doing fine. It's finished off a of Mjolnir, and now it looks like they are trying to set something up. You have a second Densetsu. Oh, it looks like they're just uh, blinking past each other, and now second Densetsu realizing that this is not the fight he wants to take. Wow, he's been toying with them for so long. This bear either. Got quick fingers, that's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, looks like we have some cat and mouse coming down for Masquerade, as well as this Venomancer. They know something's up as far as the wards are concerned. AA ult flies down, actually doesn't land on cube oddly enough, definitely looked like it did. Akimbro though, constantly throwing out those martial machines, being all too annoying, and yeah, I think, you, I think you're right, but it looks like Paxa oh, mid, mid, has mid. found a Corrin for his troubles, and that is an easy and free kill. Ooh, and... Where's that courier? He wants it. He wants it so bad. Storm can't quite get there in time. The courier gonna get away scot free as well, but not the Luna. Ever so sadly, it looks now like Masquerade in a bit of trouble. But of course, without a stun, he's he might be able to get out of this. He's got surge available. He's got four staff now, and now in runs Paxa, pops his uh, mask of madness maybe a bit prematurely it would appear, and now he's got to run away from all this. Just can't take the damage with mask of madness down. Oh man, this is this face is void. He is pretty much at the peak of utilizing that time lock. It kind of like after you have massive madness and maelstrom, that's like the first miniature peak. Now that he's gotten the full Mjolnir and massive madness, those these two items are the highest um, attack speed increase items in the game. Massive madness gives you 100 and Mjolnir gives you 80. So in total, he's he's getting over 180 Ooh. attack speed in, in Looks increase. like they really do want to do something, but second Densetsu gets hurt before he could ever blink. AA ult going to be able to polish him off. Man, this AA is absolutely loving these kills. I want to say he's up to 5-7, actually. My bad. And now Luna actually has picked up a butterfly, so she's not too far off from the farm. She's actually leading still ever so lightly ahead of Paxa. But uh, he has picked up a Demon Edge, and as soon as he sees that butterfly, that should be a pretty easy get into a uh, into a Monkey King bar as soon as she reveals it. And of course she has, so oh, yeah. he's got to go. B he's got to go MKB now, just to make sure that she never lives through a Chrono again. I don't know if Butterfly was the right choice. I think here he need he should have gone for the Satanic while holding onto a Talisman of Evasion, and that. With the Satanic, okay, so when Faces Void can't burst you down, and then you turn on the Satanic, then he's wasted his entire Chrono trying to trying to kill you. Well, exactly, and I, I, I think yeah. that's really what she was maybe hoping for with the Butterfly, just if she can live through that Chrono, things will go really well, but I don't know, Pax is pretty darn close to be able to get an MKB almost whenever he wants, so just needs to be very careful now. Butterfly does provide a huge amount of evasion, so... Maybe the Mongols just waiting around until Paxa actually does have that MKB and can deal with can deal with Corrin all by his lonesome. Not too sure exactly, but uh, I mean he is pretty scary right now, anyways. 
Oh, but there's so much resting on the shoulders of Paxa. He needs to get the big chronos. The later it goes, those cr chronos are going to become so crucial. He can't get good chronos. His team is going to end up losing the team fights. Um, and Rockwell, they just have the better individual late game. They're not solely relying on one hero to do everything. Your Luna can get picked off, but you can still win a team fight if your Tinker is good and heavily farmed, and vice versa. Uh, so, after all, in a team fight, Faces Void, he won't be able to aim all five heroes. At most, in an ideal scenario, he might be able to catch like three or four. But if you catch a full team, it, it, you still don't have to damage to take them down all at the same time. That's where you rely on the Darkseer to pull off the perfect combo of Vacuum and a Ice Blast into Nether Blast into Fissure and all those follow up. But it's all centered around Paxa. And. That, that's just so difficult every time you're playing a pieces void. Oh yeah, just knowing that everything rests on you. Obviously you do need to carry, but to be to be the sole carry and basically the sole hope for your team, it can be pretty daunting sometimes. Pretty much whenever you have to deal with that. And I, I guess it just comes down to, can Mongols pull off a wombo combo, or will Team Druckwell get so out of position that they let it happen as well, because if either of those really does happen, it's just going to be GG Mongols very quickly, and that team fight will become very apparent just how one-sided it's going to be if they get a big chrono with a vacuum as well. Yeah, and one, one big problem though is Storm he has is found a dictating the fights. Looks like they're trying to make something happen. Second and Setsu hiding in the trees. Looks like he just wants to TP out of this one sometime, but Paxa can't quite. He's not actually looking for him at the moment, and I mean, second and Setsu, he just needs to TP out of here right now. It's extremely difficult right now for uh, Mongols to find fights because Druckwell, like this Batrider, played by Saiken then Setsu, he's just playing it like a Furion, <laughs> and then you still have the Tinker on top, and this constant split pushing is just gonna it's gonna take a toll. Oh the, no! Like, gonna find just, like this. Oh yeah, Sonke absolutely melting, and now just they're just canceling their TPs. They realize they can't really do much. James Joyce actually cancels his, saying, "You know what? If you're not actually coming, I can just throw down plague wards all day long, do whatever I possibly can to uh, to keep this push going. At the very least, get a little bit more damage on this tower." And it's just uh, it just looks now like Mongols. They just can't find any fights. Their whole team is set up to get some huge team fights and make some big plays, right but. They're just, they just That's can't the find anybody, for. and then there, oh, it is indeed in range, gets the tower as well, doesn't have to deal with that, and that butterfly working quite nicely, BKB used immediately, but I don't know, there are some nice illusions, Akimbro absolutely melting, Paxa trying his very best, one more time walk, Eclipse not going to be doing too much, that's a pretty big play right now, second to Setsu, no actual lasso available, Paxa getting absolutely demolished, good thing he has an Aegis available, and with one time walk, he should be able to get out of this one, a four staff as well. Second and Setsu trying his very best, but is actually now very close to dying himself. Akimbro though absolutely cleaning up these supports with that huge dagon of his as that's happening. Masquerade in a bit of trouble. Biggest latch in the world. And now it looks like Masquerade in a bit of trouble, but of course with no more stuns or disables, one big surge might be enough to get him away, and that is one fast <laughs> piggy. Oh, oh yeah. a little bit of a botched blink. Still in a bit that's of trouble. Doesn't seem to really care too much, and with that, Paxa able to just continue to fight on, was able to get out of there alive, has an MKB on its way to himself, or should shortly, and with this Chrono available very shortly as well, so, I mean, they were able to get a Luna, but it wasn't the best trade in the world, and like you were saying, as soon as Faceless Void kind of falls, it just feels like Mongols gets really neutered, they can't do too much overall. They need... Big items on the Pugna. Um, they, uh, it has to go, it has to get to to the point where someone else on the team, apart from the Faces Void, can do something, and not just like have everything depending on him. Uh, let's go, carry Earthshaker. Right. Oh yeah. Boom. That's what you want. Yeah. Why not? Boom, chicka boom. <laughs> that only so take Shadow Blade. Ages to farm up. <laughs> Well, they have to have a backup plan. The, the alternative is the Darks here, I suppose, or even the Pugna. But Pugna going for Rod of Atos and Black King Bar, it doesn't help him very much in terms of damage output. I feel like 
The Rod of Atos was a very early game kind of item where he wants to slow down the opponent and fully utilize the drain with the with the decrepify and the blast. But what he needs is like items like Sheepstick, like the Aghanim Scepter on top, or even Shiva's. He he needs to be able to get solo kills all on his own. Paxa though, he has picked up that MKB. Gonna make uh, Corin's life a little bit scarier though. She is well on her way, however, getting that Satanic. At the very least, has the Reaver, has the Helm. And once that does happen, things might get a little bit tricky. Looks like they are able to bring Hunter MGL back in. Can't quite stun the storm forever, however. Sonke doing his very best. Sucking cube dry at least a little bit, or trying to. Now looks like a Kimbro almost oh, so dying to that Nether Ward. Able to finally find that Wind Ranger. But, of course, not the bat, who has just been such a nuisance, hiding in the trees all this time. And Mongols, while they didn't have, uh, <clears throat> while they didn't lose too many people, they lost an AA. That was a lot, that was pretty much every single hero. That was a lot of, Akimbro way too far forward, and Pakistan makes him pay for it. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> That's my illness coming back right there. Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. Paxa, he needs a Divine Rapier. They want to win, but at the same time, he kind of needs. What do you call it? Feels like he kind of need an Aghanim Scepter as well. Like he he needs a little bit more HP. I don't know what to tell you, man. He could go heart, he could go ags. That'd give him a nice nice little boost there. And I mean, I guess what's next is just even more damage. He can go Chrysalis, Daedalus. They are able to get at least a tier 2 for their troubles right now, however, and Tinker Down, they just feel so comfortable going around and taking whatever towers they want. Looks like James Joyce being an annoyance in and of himself, but uh, yeah, it's just like Team Druckwell, so good at changing the focus of what Mongols wants to do and can do. Like, every single time they're pushing on their door, every single time they're sending four heroes just to try and take down the one bat, you have this annoying Venomancer in the bot lane, not pushing in very hard, but always just enough to be scary. You have obviously Tinker doing his job very annoyingly as well, and it just seems like Mongols kind of always running around uh, and just can't decide exactly what they want to do, because almost every single time they, they move somewhere as a big group, as a big team fighting position, it doesn't go very well. Akimbro, once again, what are you doing? That could have been very scary, but Paxa not quite able to capitalize on that very close tinker. Oh. Ooh. Does try to find him in the trees, however. Okay, now finally, AA. He's gotten his Aghanim Scepter. The long-awaited Aghanim Scepter, and it can potentially be game-breaking. Dyer's uh. top tower is under attack. Yes, we'll see. Really, it looks like Paxa leading the charge. If they find these heroes in the smoke unknowingly, boom, where it is. No, turn into a pig oh, right away. A little bit too fast, those fingers, I have to say. And with that, all that Mongols can do is run away. Now, a nice wall coming out of the Dark Seer. And of course, that Luna Illusion does a huge amount of work. Double buybacks coming, Pugna and the Faceless Void immediately. They are right back into the fray. They find a Kimbro, or at least Paxa could find a Kimbro. He wants to make use of this Chronosphere, and it just looks like he can't find anybody. And now time walking away. They want to at least get this Luna. Can't quite get her. She's got haste now as well. And when it comes right down to it, maybe some unnecessary buybacks coming out of those two Mongols' mains. But... Uh, at the very least, it looks like they're going to be able to get a Roshan, but Paxa, that was some damn quick fingers coming out of this Wind Ranger. Immediately sheeped him, or pigged him, I should say, and instantly, what would have been a huge, huge Chronosphere for the Mongols, and probably the best team fight for them in the whole game yet, turns into a horrible travesty. Has to the well, they had the Ward Vision over there just now. They, they, they knew where um, Mongols were and perhaps he already just like you know one of the ways when you see a hero from really far and you want to cast a spell if you see he's going to engage is to just shift click the, the skill for example you don't even need to shift Q you just click the item and then click on the opponent and you're going to run forward and if the opponent ever blinks in right it'll be an instant hex that's what some of the pros do you know when you see like an Earthshaker afar and you have vision from, if you have vision on him right you just click the shift I mean you just click uh, the sheep's on the on the Earthshaker, and the moment he blinks in trying to go for his combo, right, he gets instantly hexed up. 
Oh yeah, and I mean that's exactly at least what it appears to happen to Paxa in that engagement. That's a pretty rough spot to be in, especially when that Chrono was so juicy and he could taste it. He actually time walked right into uh, pretty much smoke and just had no idea that they were even all there. But it would have worked out so nicely for them and unfortunate. Now it looks like they are going to be trading this tier two on the bot lane for a tier two in the mid, and or maybe not. I mean that Tinker. It'll be very annoying. Going to be able to take out these, uh, those, uh, those creeps very quickly. But that backdoor protection not really happening, so not too bad now. And they do just trade straight up. Looks like there is a satanic on the Luna, and this is going late, my friend. Um, I'm not too sure. I feel like someone on Mongols, right? Paxa, he has been surged. Is he going to be able to find him? Gets it on two. James Joyce and Corrin. Corrin absolutely doomed to fail, and now is overstaying his welcome dramatically. Has BKB still available? Looks like Cube running for his life, and now can Storm find him? There is the stun. Actually, it was Paxa with the lucky stun before. Cube still alive. Doesn't matter. Paxa finally finds him, and indeed, packs a punch. Oh, oh I'm so pleased. Oh, that, that was some good team fight from Mongols. And this is their one big opportunity to go for that big push. That's I think if happen. anything, Darkseer. it's just going to force buybacks, though. Everybody has it, really, on the Radiant team. That's good. All right, so that's two buybacks. And now all they need to do is wait for Paxas Ultimate, which is coming up in another 30 seconds. And he still has the Aegis. I don't know. I don't... I don't know why they need to retreat. It's going to be really hard to push into a Martian machine, sorry. But there will be a, a point where Akimbro has to go back to regen. And that's the moment you choose to engage. And things should pan out pretty nicely. Uh, maybe they're waiting for the gem. I mean, not, not the gem, waiting for the pipe. I don't know. There's already the pipe on Masquerade anyways. They could have gone for the push. Um, but I, I just feel like someone needs to make a Lincoln Sphere and put that Lincoln effect onto Paxa to guarantee his damage output um, forcing out so that even if the Batrider um, wants to go on you it will at least force out a four staff, you know. Ooh, they do That's find a bat. Better. Vacuum, not quite enough, however. Second and sets you able to four staff out of there, but the fissure is there as well. Paxa, of course, the cooldown on that Chronosphere. Not too drastic. That is a huge loss by any means. The bat rider down for 70 seconds. That's pretty much the entire duration of Chrono. So as soon as he's back, Chrono's going to be right there waiting for him. And uh, now they just go push in. You obviously have Luna knocking on your door in the mid, it looks like, but they really do need to look, at least make something happen here, it looks like, at the moment. Oh, catch the Tinker. That's only two layers of the Mushroom Machine. They should be able to tank it through. Oh yeah, and they decide to, but it looks like it's going to be, I don't want to say a base race, but oh, you have Corrin knocking on your door, and of course Luna, one of the strongest heroes when it comes to racing in a base. Fortification used ever so slightly wrong. Storm able to just lock him there for as long as possible. Eclipse being used, can't do too much. It looks like we have an AA ulti now as well, meaning that's Satanic. Not going to be doing as much as you would normally want it to. Masquerade needs to throw down a wall sometime soon so that this illusion can actually deal the damage they need to. That AA ult, of course, still on her, and these three heroes oh. able to take her out all by their lonesome. The Rax still stands, ranged, incredibly hurt, however. Would have liked to see this wall come down a little bit sooner, but maybe just goading out that Luna as long as humanly possible. And now Faceless Void, he's got his Chrono available again. He's got Aegis. He can be super duper ballsy, and the Luna is down for 80 more seconds. They really do need to capitalize on this. Oh man, but just now that was a great TV cancel from Cube. He instantly sheeped up Paxa. Otherwise, Paxa would have been in that fight, but I don't know. Uh, perhaps it was a little bit too much from the Luna. Shouldn't have. He, it was a little bit of uh, overconfidence. And now Paxa with the Aegis, he's just not gonna care and he's gonna go for it for sure. Um, I feel like Akimbro, he really needs to go in and use use the Dagon to, to at least. He can. Oh my oh, god. Oh, little Chrono on the cube just to make sure. See what he can do. Paxa running around. See if he can't continue it up. And now it looks like everything's going the way of the Mongols right now. The Aegis finally does pop. Mm -hmm. Only had about 40 seconds left on it, so this is exactly what he wants. And it looks like these racks gonna be falling not going straight for the throat just yet and really only tinker has buyback left on team Druckwell. so do you think they're gonna be going straight for the ages or they're going for the slow steady win with indeed they are they're going for these racks trying to get those mega creeps which 
I mean, Team Dreckwell's lineup, they still have one. They could actually win with Mega Creeps going. You just sit in the base and farm all day. So, I mean, I feel like maybe just going option. straight for the three. It's safer, but huh, you could you can do better than that. I want to see some more. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see thing, going straight for the throat. Just now, like when before before um, Paxai used the ultimate on Windrunner. I, I, I was trying to call it, I was like, Tinker, you have to use the Dagon 4. You have to get rid of the Aegis, otherwise, like, they're gonna get jumped. And that's precisely what happened. The Tinker backed out instead of using that Dagon 4 with really nice range. You can always shift the Dagon 4 into the Blink, so that, like, even if Paxa wanted to come in at you with the Time Walk, he won't be in range to do so. Uh, you, you need a proc that, um... You need to proc the Aegis on Faces Void. Uh, and with that being said, it might have stalled a little bit more, but... Because he didn't do it, his team just got cleared so quickly. Mm -hmm. And now Paxa, he's had the money, he's got his uh, boots of travel. He now needs to just basically make sure that those are off of cooldown <clears throat> whenever he dies. And then that way, I don't. it's not exactly like uh, an Aegis, but he did have Cheese. Not anymore, actually, going for the Chrysalis. Not too sure how I feel about that, because with Cheese and a boots of travel, he can basically, and a buyback, of course, he can basically just... Buy back, or he can basically get low, use cheese, buy back, boots of travel, and then it's almost like he's had an Aegis. And obviously, if he saves the Chrono for a little bit later, or something along those lines, it might not be so bad. We do have a smoke going down, however. Storm gonna be caught out right now. Can't quite do much when you're a pig. And now, if these four heroes all just hang around, things would have gone very badly for them. Pax is just waiting in the wings, and... Now, they, it just looks like they don't even care, really, that these five heroes are grouped up. They know that if they want to take a team fight, the Mongols are going to win it. But maybe feeling a little bit too uh, a little bit too scared to really go in and go straight for the throat and get these mega creeps because, obviously, with Luna in the Luna in the running, Team Druckwell can just kill your Ancient that, that quickly. I just felt like Tinker should have gone for a very early E-Blade. E-Blade can definitely save all your teammates against well, that phase of Void. It's gonna come down to this siege and this team fight right now, and if Paxa gets a chrono on whoever, on basically two or more, I feel like it's gonna go the way of the Mongols. He also has buyback, no cheese available, AA ult is all obviously there. And there it is, he gets corn at the very least, and he just barely gets cube, and that's the biggest one you need to take care of. Vacuum actually works within Chrono, oddly enough, and now who has buyback? Luna actually is still available to get back in this, Tinker always can, and they force the buyback out immediately, so now they just need to go in, capitalize, if Paxa gets a Chrono by the time they're back in there, that's probably going to be GG, and... I think that was what they were trying to do right now, is Cube was just hanging around Luna, trying to make sure that if she got chronoed, she'd be able to uh, pig up that Paxa, but just barely got caught in it as well, and that might be the game decider right there. Although Paxa playing maybe yeah. two balls, he's going to get lassoed almost. Oh, the four staff and time walk in the exact same speed. And now we have a little AA ult onto Corrin. They need to be careful here. Paxa wants to make something happen. Look at that Echo Slam on nobody. Can't quite trap Corrin too well. Nice little <laughs> bit of Cyclone cheekiness coming from it. Paxa jumping in right immediately. And of course that MKB, there's a crit to guarantee it. And that's the GG. There's nothing they can do. Paxa, who just commanding this entire game. The Bat doesn't quite know where to go right now. Obviously you have a Kimbro. Nobody wanting to just give up this game for free and say GG, but Druckwell, they have to realize this is over. They just cannot contend with Paxa right now, especially without the Luna. Oh, very hard fought and hard won. Though. Oh, that... It's just so enjoyable watching Faceless Void go from his normal walking speed to in chrono walking speed. He just shoots off like a rocket. Oh, it is just the best. Yeah, so he does manage to withstand the pressure. They played well as a team. Um, every time they get a good chrono, the follow-ups are usually there. Um, yeah, overall, good game. Oh yeah, very good game indeed. So thank you all for tuning in. And that is going to be the Mongols going to the finals against Wild Witch Doctors. That game should be coming up none too shortly. This set of three is actually especially long because of that drastically drastically huge pr pause that happened in the 
first game there, was it? Pretty sure it was. And then, uh, so hopefully, I think the finals are actually coming up fairly shortly, so don't go anywhere. All of you Dota 2 loungers, I hope you got some rares, or maybe you didn't. It was a pretty even betting, and uh, there you have it. I've been Briefcase, along with the lovely and handsome Mito, bringing you this ESPL weekly series number six. And so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with uh, we'll be back with the finals.